I'd like to start off the panel discussion by asking Shori a, uh, a question. I didn't chicken out in asking the, uh, the secretary, um, uh, but he ran out of time. Uh, those are asked him. But he talks about naming and shaming uh, of states. Uh, but uh, uh, David, a few moments ago, talked about uh, corruption. And uh, uh, one of the biggest bottlenecks uh, that many people have faced is dealing with bureaucrats. Do you think uh, India should start naming and shaming bureaucrats? But let me answer that question a bit differently. I think the bureaucrat is a symptom of the malaise. It's not the cause of the malaise. So you can name and shame bureaucrats and you know you can you can punish a few and set that as an example but that is not an institutional reform what what i think and i think there is a reasonable amount of political consensus coming around in india is that we need to completely rechange the way we have our bureaucracy as a whole the kind of administrative reforms that we need to bring about have to be radically uh, different to create a bureaucracy that meets our 21st century aspirations now I think politically we have achieved a lot of that because today much of the narrative and I you know whether it is this government or a new another government that comes I think for the next 40 50 years as Amitabh rightly pointed out much of India's narrative will be about economic development nobody will be able to replace somebody will come at a come up as a political alternative to Mr. Modi if he has a different political thesis of how he will achieve that development and people buy into it we've just had about four days back 17 secretaries were, named, were, were appointed, they are being given a chance. If they don't perform, they are out. It's the first time, I think, in this last one year, you've seen a foreign secretary, a home secretary, uh, there are two more who've, who've been asked to go overnight. Finance secretary, Mayra, they were all asked to go overnight. So it's, it's, the, it's a gutsy, decisive government which wants performance. So it's really putting its money where its mouth is. It wants to see a performance level from the bureaucracy. As a tax advisor, um, you, just a few weeks ago, and, you know, we've heard everything what Gopika is saying, and I sense that as well. Yeah. But you know, there was this ridiculous form that the uh, the Indian fin the finance ministry came out with, which was 25, 26 pages long, where uh, somebody would have to fill in how many times they've travelled uh, abroad in the last one and a half years, and and all, all of that. Um, they, they admitted they got it wrong, but. What does that say about you know what's happening at you know the political level and what's happening uh, down below? Is there a disconnect you're seeing? I think you have to go, take a step back. It's a question of the philosophy of what's driving that initiative. Um, it's to do with the tax avoidance versus actually paying taxes or not. So that's the fundamental difference here. Um, if you go at a state level, there are various forms you fill in. I, I myself, being you know, I've worked in the industry myself. Uh, where I used to fill in 15 or 16 forms <coughs> in an accountant. But frankly speaking, that's actually streamlined now. A lot of states, um, especially where the BJP government is in, things are moving faster. Um, so I think to answer your question, I don't know the exact details of what exactly happened on, in that particular incident. But I think at a state level, things are getting much more streamlined. Uh, no, it's, become a, it's become a three-page form. Okay. It's been reduced so, to three pages. So I think the, 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 the message here is that the tax reforms are taking place, and I think the state government governments are, have been asked to, you know, really perform in every sphere of the administrative part of the system. Well, I mean, we we do look forward to a Prime Minister Modi visit. Uh, Prime Minister Cameron has invited him. Um, we haven't yet finalised dates, but we do hope to welcome Prime Minister Modi to the UK at some point before the end of the calendar year. Uh, so keep your eyes peeled for that one. In terms of deliverables, I mean, Prime Minister Modi will of course have his his own agenda. Um, we'll want to be uh, with Prime Minister Modi announcing some good business deals. We'll want to be updating, I would imagine, on the work on ease of doing business. I think one of the themes, though, that we'll really be keen to highlight is uh, a theme of around collaboration. Um, and, and it was an interesting question you posed earlier around will make in India, make in India um, benefit UK the UK economy overall? Is it protectionist? Is it actually extracting value out of the UK? And, from where, from where we sit as the British government, making India is a, is a very good thing. The UK and India can make great things together. They already do. There's lots of examples already of really productive collaboration between the two nations. We want to promote that more. And one of the things that we can do as British government is provide a platform for British companies who are already collaborating successfully with India or who want to collaborate successfully with India. Well, I just feel that the UK can, can do so much more I just worry we're not doing enough. Can, can, you, can you respond to that? 
there's a difference, I suppose, between the perception and the reality. I think the fact that many people overlook um, in India, the UK and perhaps globally is that the UK is uh, the largest G20 investor in India currently. It invests more than America and Japan put together on the figures that I've seen. I think, I mean, that's part of what's wrapped up in your question there is, if that's the case, are we doing enough to shout about it? Um, which is, I suppose, precisely where the British government can come in, because one of the key roles that we can play is in raising the British profile um, with the decision makers in India. As you would expect, that is something that we consistently try to do. And I think one of the things which I've seen, having worked in the tea industry myself, I remember the UK shareholders used to come there and literally know the names of the people individually. They used to know the families who used to work in those plantations. That was the difference when, when you know, nowadays industrialists go there, they meet with the central government people, and that's it, one or two meetings, then expect the local people to sort of deliver the business plan. That's not how it's going to work. You have to engage with the local people, local trade bodies, go down to the municipal councils, make yourself presence there. I think it is possible, but I think we need to raise our profile at a local local level rather than at a government level. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, the, that's the point I will make. Mm -hmm. There may have been a communication gap. There may have been a lack of communication because the UK has been internally very busy, internally thinking about how to set things right, I guess. But uh, uh, and maybe England's got to come out of its shell in terms of India and reach out. Mm. There's been too much of Europe around here. Mm. And you've got to come out and look at Asia. If India is looking east, maybe you've got to look much more east than just Europe. Just go beyond that. Mm.